in the middle of a crowd. Maybe it's sitting in a church pew. You're surrounded by people, but it's like you're not even there. Maybe you're walking in a busy city. Maybe you're sitting with classmates in a school. We interact with crowds so often in our world, but how do we feel when we're amongst other people? Do you feel like you're the center of attention? Do you feel like you stick out? Or maybe it's one of those places where you're able to blend into the background and no one knows that you're there. It could be a place of anxiety, possibly a place of comfort. Jesus was in crowds often. And today we're going to talk a little bit about what I like to call sassy scripture. Or scripture that, when you look at it, looks a little bit different because of the context in which Jesus places our normal reactions against one of Christ-like nature. And it's not only in the New Testament. The Hebrew Bible has sassy scripture, too. Crowds can be a place in which we don't know how our actions affect others. In recent events of our world, crowds have become a place in which we're scared. We feel vulnerable. We don't know what's going to happen next or how we should react. I want you to take a moment and think about the last time you were in a crowd. What was going on? Where were you? Sometimes we talk about crowd mentality. Sometimes crowds make us a different person than we would be if no one was watching. Our first scripture story today comes in the Hebrew Bible. It's the story of Moses. Moses is with the rest of the Israelites in the desert, and he goes up on the mountain, and he gets the Ten Commandments. Most of us, at least those of us who live in Steamboat Springs, know what it's like to climb a mountain. It's not easy, and it's not fast. But he comes back down from the mountain after being away for a while, and he finds the Israelite people worshiping a false idol. He gets so angry, so mad, that he literally breaks the Ten Commandments. He throws them on the ground, and they break. This crowd of people watching him, they realize how frustrated Moses is. And Moses is angry. This happens to us when we are disappointed, right? We get angry. We get frustrated. And we break things. Moses literally broke the rules. But God did not abandon him. God said, come back up this mountain. And he gave him a second set. A second set of the Ten Commandments, the basis of our faith journey for many of us. So the first sassy scripture lesson I would try and impart to you is don't be too upset when you break the rules. God still loves you. You might have consequences, like hiking back up a mountain for a second time. But it's not the end of the world. Those people around you will still love you, will still care about you, will still be there for you. Because if Moses can literally break the rules and still be loved, you can as well. The crowd that surrounded Moses saw his anger, but also saw his commitment to God in walking back up the mountain to retrieve another set of Ten Commandments. It was an impact on their behavior. No, the Israelite people didn't proceed in being perfect from there on out, but they saw Moses' commitment to them and to God. Just as God will see your commitment as well. One mistake does not define you, in a crowd or by yourself. Our second story today is one of Jesus. Jesus is speaking to a crowd, and a lawyer raises his hand and says, Jesus, what is the most important commandment? And Jesus says, love your neighbor as yourself and love the Lord your God. The lawyer, I think, trying to be a little sassy and scandalous, says, well, who's my neighbor? 
And Jesus tells the story of the Good Samaritan. In this story, Jesus describes a man who's on a road and is attacked by robbers. Multiple people who would have been like this lawyer, high in status, possibly relatively wealthy, and a well-thought-out member of society, priests, rabbis, come by this man and leave him alone. They don't stop to help him. They don't stop to check to even see if he's alive. But the Samaritan, someone in which society said this lawyer had no responsibility to, stops, helps the man, pays for his lodging, comes back to check on him. Jesus challenges this societal norm in front of a crowd to say, your neighbor is the person you think you're least like and the person you are most like. As we go out into the world and we look at our world right now, it's easy to be angry at other people. It's easy to look at people who have different views on gun policy or different views politically and see them as our enemy. But Jesus says to this crowd, no, they are your neighbor and your responsibility is to love them. Jesus teaches in this moment that love and grace provides us hope as a part of our society. That conversation and understanding and rethinking what we thought we knew is a way to gain wholeness and healing that this man who was robbed on the side of the road is able to gain because of a man he probably would never have talked to. Isn't it interesting how this crowd of people was able to see Jesus turn scripture almost upside down to say those you thought were not related to you and love are your responsibility, are those who you are called to love. Possibly even more than those where it's easy. So take from this that those you are called to love, those you are called to be in relationship with, might not be the people that look like you or think like you, but they are still part of God's community, they are still children of God. Listen, learn, be like this crowd that day that was revolutionized in their thinking, understanding that the Son of God sees every child of God as valuable. The last sassy scripture lesson for today is another one of Jesus. He's visiting with his friends, Mary and Martha, Many of us know this story well. Martha is in the kitchen getting dinner ready, and Mary, her sister, is just sitting at the feet of Jesus. Martha's busy. She's getting everything together. She's cleaning. She's making sure everything's perfect. And she gets so angry at her sister for not helping her. She gets so angry that she comes over to her sister, doesn't even speak to her, and says, Jesus, Mary isn't helping me. Why are you okay with this? And Jesus acknowledges the work that Martha's been doing, but says Mary is sitting in the presence of God and she understands that that time is short. She is being present with Jesus living in that moment. A lot of times we might think that our responsibility in a crowd or in a group of people is to do our task, to follow what we are there to do. In school, we're supposed to work hard, never take breaks. In our job, we're supposed to be diligent, fill out those hours as much as we can. We're supposed to be on all the time. And sometimes when an opportunity comes to us to enjoy the company of another, we are too busy to take it. We're too busy to seize a moment that we will never have again. But once again, Jesus says to these women, women who, mind you, societally would have been expected to be busy and working and not sitting at the feet of Jesus, listening to the gospel, to the good news, turns that story once again to say, be present in this moment. So when you think you might be too busy, too caught up, in the movement of a crowd to take a moment and see something 
sees an opportunity in which you thought wouldn't be possible for you, do it. Just as Mary sits at the feet of Jesus, feet that she wouldn't be able to sit at for long, I implore to you, take the opportunity in which you have. Maybe it's a study abroad experience. Maybe it's a picnic with a friend. Maybe it's just a moment to sit still and listen to the wind instead of hurrying off to your next to-do list task. This sassy teaching of Jesus, in my opinion, is one in which it encourages us to seize every moment we have because no next moment is guaranteed. It's not promised. Be thankful for today and live the best today you can because if the food isn't ready or the living room isn't dusted, you did seize the moment and seize the day that God gave you. These sassy scriptures that put us in the midst of a crowd, but yet say to us, your choices are important. Your choices to love the stranger, love the neighbor, love those that are different than you. Your choice to seize the day that God has given and your choice to understand that there is grace when a rule is broken. These scriptures are the ones that encourage us to go out in the world and make a difference. To see the difference that God is making in this world, even when we look around and all we want to do is cry. God lives in you. God lives in me. God lives in the stranger in which you think is the devil. God is present in the crowd. God is present when you feel alone or when you feel overwhelmed by be not being alone. Look to these pieces of scripture and be reminded that God is there, that Jesus walks with you even when it is difficult, and that even when you feel alone, you never are.